Hi, everybody. So excited to have you here. Welcome to my live, my Tuesday live, where I get to talk about this week's project that is coming up dive a little more into what materials we're going to be using in that tutorial so you can have things ready ahead of time if you would like. Uh, also talk about a little bit of other behind the scene information, things that uh, is, is just going on, things looking forward to. And also at the very end of this live, I will open the floor to a Q&A where you can ask me questions and I can answer them live with you right here. You got my attention. I am here live with you. We are actually spending time together and I'm really excited to be spending time with you. Thank you everybody for joining me in the chat, for being here, making time on this lovely, what is this, Wednesday? Yes, it's Wednesday. No, Tuesday. See, that's, I think that's the epitome of how my week is going. <laughs> Happy Tuesday. Today is Tuesday. Tuesday live. <laughs> All right. So hi, guys. When it comes to this live, like I broke it down for you, um, it's going to be just a lot of me talking, me prepping that way. If anyone comes to see this video after the live, it's to the point and getting the information across. And then after I'm done talking about everything to talk about, then we get to open the floor for Q&A. So if you'd like, you can feel free to field questions in the chat. I have my amazing moderator, Hannah, who is in the chat right now, and she's fielding your questions. And as your questions come in, she screenshots and texts them to me. So when I'm ready for the Q&A session, I'm not taking lots of time reading, reading, reading through the chat to find a question. I have everything front loaded right here. I actually also fielded some of your questions from the very beginning of the chat. So I have those written down as well. So I think I got you covered. I'm so excited to be here for you and be able to answer those questions for you. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. What other... Okay, I think I covered all that. All right, so this Friday's tutorial, I'm really excited. It is going to be the Montana Sunrise Head Wrap. Now, you may think this looks quite familiar, which you would be absolutely correct. So the Montana Sunrise Head Wrap is a set pairing to... Let's go. The Montana Sunrise Neck Wrap. So head wrap, neck wrap. So if you remember a couple of weeks ago, I did this guy, which was the keyhole scarf where you get to slip the other side in and it lays flat comfortably and it stays put. So you're not fussing with it. It's just locked in, which is super awesome because sometimes it's just really annoying to fuss with your scarf as it gets loose or whatnot. Um, but when I made this scarf, I realized that it just didn't seem complete. I, I needed something extra. And when using this yarn, there was a ton of yarn extra. So I'm like, I've got to make something to go with this scarf. So I did. I made a head wrap. So put this on. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Top of ears. <laughs> I'm such a goof. All right, so they go together really well. And what I'm absolutely loving about this head wrap is it's so lightweight. It's like a feather. I barely can tell that's on. I honestly sometimes forget that I'm even wearing it. It's so soft and it's also really, really warm. But I'm also really excited about the coverage of the ears. It's so wide that the top of the ear and the bottom of the ear are completely covered. So you're good. You're good to go. Now, I know a question is going to be asked about why a head wrap opposed to a full beanie, because I know a lot of people are into beanies. Well, for me personally, I am always wearing my hair up. I don't know if you've noticed this in other videos. If you haven't, go back and check my last like 10 videos. I swear that you'll notice that I'm often wearing my hair up. It's just a thing. I've done it since I was a little girl. So I'm always having my hair up. But when I wear beanies, my hair has to be down because I can't, it does, it, the beanie doesn't fit when I am, when I have my hair up. So I really like head wraps for that reason. So I can have my hair up and still wear something to cover my ears. And I just also thought it was a fun new project that I haven't done yet here on my channel was an actual head wrap that we could play with and something, something a little bit different, you know, and it's cute. It's really cute. So 
super easy too. I'm very excited about it. But yeah, now I have a set. That is something I've been asked by uh, a couple or many different followers is, Tiffany, like, it's so great that you have like one or the other, but it'd be really cool if you could make a set. So there's my first set. <laughs> and what's even more amazing, guys, is the yarn that we are using after making a full scarf and a full head wrap there's still a significant amount of yarn left over. So you might be asking right now, okay, okay, okay. What yarn did you use? So it's basically everything that I used for the scarf. I just kept it the same. So that way it was cohesive. You know, it's an actual legit pairing. So the yarn is Karen Latte Cakes in the color Coconut Cream. And it's just absolutely beautiful. I love neutral colors. I think they're just very calming. They just make a zen vibe go on when you're wearing it, when you look at it. It's just, again, very calming. And I really appreciate that. The yarn itself does have a texture, but it's not so textured that you can't see the stitches. You can still see this, the stitches. Now, row one is the most challenging because you're working right off, off of the foundation row chain. But after you finished row one, the stitches are so easily identifiable. You'll you'll be fine. You'll be fine. And if you have any questions or you just you're not sure, you you just don't know if you want to give it a try or you do try it and it's it's just it's too hard, too complicated, then go ahead and substitute the yarn. This is a size five weight bulky chunky yarn. Now I would say that every single size five weight bulky chunky yarn is going to work up the same. It probably won't work up exactly the same, but it'll get really close. You can still use the same dimensions and you'll be fine. Okay. So that is the yarn. The crochet hook that I used for this project is a K101 slash two, or it's a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. So K or 6.5 millimeter crochet hook. I like using the bigger hook for the size five yarn because then the stitches are drapey, they're loose, and they're comfortable. You don't want anything too tight because if it's tight, then it's stiff. And if it's stiff, it's not necessarily comfortable. All right. Welcome everybody into the chat. Wanted to say hi real quick. You guys are amazing. All of you members out there, use your emojis. Now is the time. Use them like go crazy. Go crazy with your emojis, members. Uh, and I'm going to do a member drop right now real quick. Check out my new membership program. It, it's awesome. Crafters Gathering, I'm having a blast. We basically do this two times more a week on Wednesdays and on Saturdays. So except for in the Crafters Gathering, I can see you and I can hear you. So it's more of an interaction, more of a hangout. So give it a peek. Give it a try. See if you like it. I would love for you to join. Okay. Next thing you're going to need is a yarn needle or a tapestry needle. Just a regular one. Nothing fancy. Nothing special. I am joining ends together for the head wrap. So that's mainly what this is for. We're really not weaving any ends into the project, but there's a lot of joining. So you need the yarn needle or a tapestry needle. Both will work. A pair of scissors and optional, but I think it would be extra beneficial is a stitch marker or a row marker. And we only really use these to keep the two sides pinned together so when you're joining them they don't shift on you which is so annoying so that's mainly what i use the stitch markers or row markers for you don't need them you can totally get away without them um, or also to help you count your rows if you want to add a row marker stitch marker to the end of every row it can make it much faster for you to count bloop, 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 bloop. okay so just some materials that you may find that you need. Definitely this, definitely that, definitely the yarn. <laughs> this and that is yarn and crochet hook. <laughs> but optional is that. Okay. I think that's every for, everything for the head wrap. It works up super fast, guys. I'm so excited for you to get started, get this video to go out to you. So that is Friday's video. Okay. Then I wanted to mention next week's video. So I wasn't going to say anything today except for my daughter at dinner tonight was like, mom, 
parent open house is on Tuesday next week. She told me like a long time ago too. I think I have it written somewhere, but totally forgot. <laughs> so yeah, next, next Tuesday, I won't be able to be on here because I'm going to be at the kids school for an open house. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and talk about next week's video right now that I'm really excited about. This is going to be awesome. So what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to start doing is a uh, grouping small, tiny videos for all information on crochet topics. I'm going to group information. So Next week, I'm going to group five different videos. They're going to be short little videos. And it's going to be basically the five materials I think every person who's going to get started crocheting needs and why. So each, each little video will be each individual material, learning everything about that material and my recommendation on which one a brand new crocheter should start with, should begin with. Now, what the I think the purpose, the point of me diving into this information, a lot of people go into how to get started, how to start crocheting, what to do to begin. This topic has been done over and over and over and over and over again. I think I've actually made this how to begin crocheting video like two times, but this time I'm doing it way different. And what I mean by doing it way different is I'm providing more information into individual topics to really enlighten the brand new crocheter, it's the person that's just stepping in the door with it, just getting started with more information, giving them a why, giving them like all the information, all the options and uh, why I recommend them to, to get started with something. And I think that's important. I think what happens a lot, guys, is when we teach how to start crocheting either we take some information some knowledge that we have for granted and we just assume that it's common knowledge but it's not uh there's a couple things i've run into where people are asking these extremely basic questions and i'm like oh okay this is something that i just thought people would know but it's not fair to assume people know things when they're just entering a field brand new. So I'm really excited to dive into these. They're going to be short little clips. What I'm hoping for is that it's like binge worthy information where you're like, oh, that was great. What, what was next? Oh, that was great. What was next? Short, sweet, to the point. It's going to be great. So this grouping of video for uh, crochet getting started, what you need to begin is going to be next week's kind of like grouping of a bunch of little videos that I'll be releasing. And then every month I'm going to be releasing another little grouping of videos based on another topic, another area. And I think it's going to be awesome. I'm very, very excited. So that is going to be next week's video. You're going to love it or videos. You're going to love it. It's going to be great. So what else did I want to mention tonight? Oh gosh, breathe. <laughs> Again, welcome everybody. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, when it comes to the owl video, I saw somebody mention it. Now I'm going to, that, that's kind of a, a sore subject a little bit. Um, so the owl video was a technical difficulty that frustrated me so much. Uh, I just, my computer wasn't uploading the videos. It was literally like just not taking the information and moving it to where I needed it to move. So, I mean, I spent two whole days staring at my computer screen, trying to move data. <laughs> I was like, ah, I'm literally pulling my hair out and I was so frustrated. So finally I got the information where it needed to go. I do believe I finally have the owl video finished. It's ready. I want to do one more look over of it to make sure that there's no typos, that there's no um, it, nothing to be addressed and then I'll get it released as soon as possible. I'm so sorry. And that I feel bad for teasing you guys with the owl because I had this owl video recorded last week, like early last week. I was so pumped, so ready to release it. And then the computer, the computer, <laughs> the thing I can't have control over was the thing that held me back. So 
I am hoping, fingers crossed, to, to just review this OWL tutorial one more time and then get that live to you as soon as possible. So I apologize for the delay and for hyping it up so much. I am super excited. They are super cute and they are super fun. So I can't wait to get that video out to you guys. Um, was there anything else I wanted to mention? I don't think so. I uh, just wanted to throw out there, if you haven't checked out my social media, my Facebook, my Instagram, I am constantly putting behind the scenes stuff that I'm working on, behind the scenes pictures. Did you see the one with the Girl Scout cookies? My daughter's a Girl Scout. She uh, was selling Girl Scout cookies and there I was working on an upcoming tutorial, like behind the table. I thought that was fun. So yeah, I, I give you sneak peeks, sneak peeks on what I'm doing behind the scenes. All right, so let's go ahead and start talking about questions because I know that is going to be a big talk topic. The more consistent that I'm on here every Tuesday, I feel the more people join because they want to ask questions, they want the interaction, they want to just be more part of the live, which I think is awesome. I love spending time with you guys. It's one of my favorite things to do. And that's why I have, uh, what is it? Uh, um a vlog style channel that I just began just to kind of give you like a little sneak peek, me talking to the camera about what's going on with me and talking to you guys about upcoming tutorials. I have a lot of fun with it. So you guys are awesome. Thanks for being here. But the more consistent I am, I feel like the more questions come. <laughs> and I think that's great too. So let's go ahead and dive into the Q&A session right now and get started with some of these questions. Hannah has already blown up my phone. So that's great. So Hannah is there looking out for you guys. She's fielding your questions right now. So if Hannah talks to you or uh, says anything in the chat, she is my moderator and she is fielding all the questions for me and sending me the text messages. So that way I'm not reading through the, the chat. They're just coming straight to me. So got some questions here. One is what type of yarn would you use for a mosaic project? Now I haven't played with mosaic projects yet. I've looked at them. I think they're beautiful. If I were to use a yarn for a mosaic project, it would be a solid yarn. I think that would be important to me. Now, uh, whether or not it's solid, or I mean non-textured when I say solid, whether or not that is a consistent color, I think it would be a lot of fun if the yarn for a mosaic project was variegated. That way, as you're working it, it changes color with you, which I think would be really, really pretty. I feel like I've seen that in a magazine before too. So I love it. Oh my gosh, Jody Brown. Thank you so much for the super. You are amazing. I appreciate it. Thank you so incredibly much, Jody. Ah, thank you. Okay. So yes, when it comes to mosaic projects, I am excited to get started working on one, but right now it's not in my agenda. I have so many projects that I'm so excited to get out to you guys. Um, they are already in my agenda. I'm staring at them right now. <laughs> and unfortunately, Mosaic hasn't made it into the tutorial list for this year. But hopefully maybe uh, the next year I'll be able to do something really fun, creative with one. Okay, next question. Does the turning chain count as a stitch? Depends on the pattern that you are looking at. Bet you weren't expecting that answer. Sometimes, depending on who wrote the pattern, the person will identify the turning chain as a stitch. So it's just really important for you to fully read the pattern to understand what the person is getting across, what they're trying to do. Um, because it'll be explained there. It really will. Uh, also turn. Okay. The turning chain will be specified. Like uh, if it's chain two, the turning chain counts as your first double crochet stitch. I really try to be as transparent and upfront with that as possible, especially in my patterns. I will start each round or row with uh, chain two and then parenthesis counts as first stitch or does not count as first stitch. And so I try to be as, as explainative or what's, what's the word? I just try to explain things as clear and thorough as possible. So really turning chain counting as a stitch, it depends on the pattern. It really does. All right, going over here. Okay, questions for reference if you haven't written them down. Let me see here. 
Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, okay. What size does a blanket need to be for a three to six month old baby? I usually do the half double crochet stitch. Great question. So that really depends on you. And I mean, I swear a lot of different charts say a lot of different things. But what I seem to really connect with is the receiving blanket size that is 40 inches wide by 40 inches long. That's actually a really decent size blanket. I think it would be perfect for a three to five month old baby because it's let me show you 40 40 40 inches wide Forty inches long. So, I think that's the perfect size for a three to six month baby. So I would go with that. And if you're looking for how many chains to that you would need to accomplish that size, I did make a video on how to figure that out. It's how many. What did I name it? How many stitches to make a blanket? I think it is. It's a picture with this pink tape measure, the thumbnail is literally, literally this pink tape measure on top of a blanket measuring the project. Um, so check, check that out. It fully explains in detail how to meet dimension of any size blanket that you might want to make. I think you'll like it a lot. Uh, great question, Hope. Okay. Is it possible to make a 12 point star blanket in moss linen stitch? I thought about using the Premier color pack, you get 20 mini balls, this much yards each or in the whole pack. Um, oh gosh. Kristen, that is one I, I don't know. Is it possible to make a 12 point star with the moss linen stitch? I haven't played with it. Uh, I, I think you could, because really when it comes to a star, it's, it's, Basically, okay. hear me out here. It's like a chevron. So you got the, the bottom of the point where you're going to be joining stitches together. And then you got the top of the point where you're going to be expanding, right? So you'll do a stitch, then chains, and then another stitch to expand the top of the point, right? So if you're doing a 12 point star, I, I believe you could, uh, uh, if it's a, if it takes a multiple of two stitches, I, I, I'm really just going off the fly right now. I, if depending on the stitch count for the stitch, if it takes a multiple of two to make the actual moss stitch, like you need two stitch spaces to accomplish the look of the stitch, you might want to shy away from it. You really, it's most helpful if you can make the stitch that you are making in one stitch space, which is why bobbles work, which is why popcorns work, um, which is really why, um, yeah, any of those like balls, that they work because they can all be made in the same stitch. So if it's a one-to-one -one ratio, it's a lot easier to work the star because you can just focus on the individual stitches, knowing where to expand, where to grow and where to decrease. If it comes to, I need one stitch to put the stitch in and then the next stitch to complete this stitch makes it a lot harder. So play with it. I would, I, I'm not going to squash it. I don't know. Honestly, I haven't played with it, but give it a try. And then uh, let me know what your experience was. You can communicate with me either uh, on a social media. You can communicate with me 
in an email, or I would even love it if you could communicate with me in the crafters gathering. That would be awesome. That way I can actually talk to you and have a conversation about it and see it, see, see what you're working with, which is really cool. All right. So next question, how do I finish off my crochet projects? So believe it or not, when I saw this question, I was like, you know, they don't always explain or tell you how to finish a project, either in a pattern or in a video. And so I try to show beginning through completion, through end in all of my videos. There may be a couple where I just kind of leave you hanging like, OK, just keep repeating until you've met your desired length kind of thing. But really, the way you will finish a project is by tying off your work. You just cut your yarn and then using your crochet hook, grab the tail of the yarn, pull it through the loop that is on your crochet hook, pull that yarn tight, pull that tail tight, and it creates a slip knot that finishes off your work. And then you just weave in your ends. All right. Look at you guys. You have so many questions. <laughs> I'm so excited. Okay. So here we go. Did I answer all? that. I can't hear anything. Can you guys hear me? Somebody just said, I can't hear anything. I'm, I'm watching, I'm watching the, um, the chat right now. Yep. Okay. Okay, cool. Cause yeah, I had someone who said, I can't hear anything. So I'm like, have I been doing this whole live and you can't hear me? That would be a bit, Hannah, I would, I would think that she would be like, Tiffany, Tiffany, Tiffany. <laughs> so, all right. Oh, great, great, great. Okay, cool. I am finishing a blanket with the double herringbone stitch. Isn't that a beautiful stitch? I love that stitch. What border should I use? Okay. So if you're working the double herringbone crochet stitch, let that be the star of the show because it is super pretty. And I don't know what type of yarn you used. If you used just a solid color or if you used a, a variegated yarn that changes color somewhere in the pattern, both would be flattering. Um, but it, oh, I mean, I'm going to kind of throw it back to you a little bit. Do you want the attention to be centered on the main body of the blanket or do you want that to just be kind of like a solid fill and let the attention go to the border? So that that's kind of like, what, what do you want? What do you want to do with your project? Uh, if you're wanting to bring all attention to the herringbone stitch, which is beautiful, it really is, then I would keep my border very simple. You can make it as short or, you know, as thin a border or as wide of a border as you want. That's completely optional. Keep it simple. I mean, like stick with the basic stitches, the single crochet, half double crochet, or even a double crochet stitch. Simple, just individual one to one ratio stitches round and round and round until you have met the, um, the width that you like, that you think is quite flattering and you're really happy with it. If you want a little bit of help on how to accomplish just a very very plain, very simple border. I did make a video on that. It's the single crochet stitch border. Um, but honestly, you could use that same exact border, that same exact tutorial and swapping the single crochet stitch that I used for a half double crochet or even a double crochet stitch. And it will do the, the same exact thing. It's the same exact process. Okay. Now, if you want the border to be the star of the show, there's a lot of fun uh, blanket borders that you can play with, that you can have fun with. But the more detailed you want your border to get, the more likely that a stitch count requirement is going to get involved. So you're going to have to count stitches. You're going to have to count number of rows. And you're going to just have to be very cautious about the growth of every round that you make for your border that you're still staying on count. So everything will work out. Uh, if Sometimes if you have like a border book, like a book of crochet border patterns. It'll give you a stitch count requirement and just count the number of rows you have. So you know how many stitches you're putting in the side of your blanket and also count the number of stitches, both in the bottom of your blanket and the top of your blanket. You'd be surprised how many people begin and end their project with a different number of stitches. 
So <laughs> happens to the best of us. I, I'm not, I'm not saying that's necessarily like only for uh, brand new people. It can happen to people that have been crocheting for a long time, but, but yeah, you can have fun with that too. So I'm going to let that be up to you. All right. What is the hardest thing you have ever had to crochet? This one, I, I read this when I wrote it down. I was like, oh gosh, there was one blanket pattern. Actually, it's been, there's been a couple blanket patterns that were super, super detailed. Um, it was not a, not a graph gan. It was more of a using a post stitch to make a design for one of them. And every row, every row was different. So you had to be, you had to just really pay attention to what was happening. Uh, and then there was another blanket that I made that um, had this really cool ripple effect. And again, it was like a 16 row repeat. So once you got a feel for what was happening, it was easier, but you had to be, you just had to know where to put the stitch. It was really, really hard to be able to identify with the pattern where you were putting your stitches. So it was like, okay, um, I think it should go here. <laughs> And that's when you know you've entered the intermediate or advanced level crochet pattern is when it's too complicated for the pattern to tell you where it's going, where the stitch is going. You just kind of have to know, like be intuitive a little bit like that. That's where it should go. So that's where I'm putting it. And oh, it worked. OK, <laughs> so I've messed with patterns like that, too. And it just takes a lot of concentration and you can get through it. It's just more focused. Okay, here we go. You guys are beautiful. You're amazing. Thanks for hanging out with me. I really appreciate it. You guys are just amazing. Okay. Um, life in Janie's Crochet World. Okay, hi, Tiffany. Question, I am finishing a blanket with a double... Oh, I already answered that one. Okay. Um, Christine... Saw an owl, was wondering how to make it. That tutorial is coming out very soon, I promise. I promise. Vicky asks, what is a good brand of 100% cotton yarn for dish towels? Great question. Okay, so I'm actually going to also throw this one back in the chat. I want to have like an interaction right now. I'm going to get you guys involved in this one. So I had a question that's saying, uh, it's Vicky. She wants to know what a good brand of 100% cotton yarn is for dish towels. Now, honestly, I think the first initial reaction would be Lily Sugar and Cream because I think that is the brand most of us, most of us associate as, okay, that one's 100% cotton. We know that for sure. Um, it makes great washcloths. But when it comes to dish towels, I honestly think that Lily Sugar and Cream, that size four weight yarn, it's a, it's a bit too bulky. I, I wouldn't want to use it as a dish towel. Um, definitely like a small washcloth. Um, what I, when I'm thinking dish towel, I'm thinking like more of a, you know, one of those towels that are like that big, you know, you fold, you trifold. <laughs> so um, I would use like a three weight uh, cotton blend. I think I, I would want, I don't think I have a label on it. I have it, but I don't think I have a label on it. I would use like a cotton blend or um, a size three weight, something a little looser, a little lighter. Um, if you can find a 100% cotton that is a little more drapey. What do you guys say? Um, I'm reading the chat. What, what are your recommendations here? Okay, Hobby Lobby. I love this cotton is great. Okay. Um, and do you prefer to pull your, okay, that's a question. Premier cotton poly blend. Yes, Trudy. Thank you. You got me. You got my back. Uh, that one, I think that's the one I was thinking. Thank you. Premier cotton poly blend is great. Okay. So there you go, Vicky. I would give that one a try. Now I believe you can find that at Michael's. I think they have that at Michael's uh, or 
you can buy it online. You can give it a try there. But I, I think that, I think, I, I think you're really going to like that one, Vicki. Okay. Next question. When releasing, I will took care of that. Have you chosen a pattern for the yarn you posted? <gasps> okay. So right before I pushed the go live button, I was frantically putting this square on a, um, I was pinning it down on a, a blocking pad because the yarn itself, it hasn't been blocked yet, but I wanted to stretch it out. So you have an idea of what it'll look like. Now, I'm just assuming this is the yarn that you were talking about. Was it this stuff? Or you might also recognize it as. That stuff. So pretty, isn't it? So this is the hand dyed uh, skein that I got from McMullen Fiber Co., uh, I found her on Instagram. Her yarn is, <laughs> it's, every time I see one of her posts, I just, I can't look away. I instantly just stare at her, her yarn colors, combinations, and I daydream. They're, they're that beautiful. They are that beautiful. This woman is an artist. And I felt so lucky that she was able to make this um make this in a size that I work with so this was her color tone her color palette and I begged her I was like can you please make that in a size three weight yarn something that I am comfortable working with because I think most of her yarns are like a two and I just don't work with a two um so she did that for me and I think she is willing to uh, sell it to other people also but this is it this is this caked up And I'm, I have a vision in my mind. I have a vision in my head of what I'm going to do. And so this is just kind of beginning stages. But this is going to be like one section of it. And then I'm going to make, it's like, like a granny square, basically. But I'm going to cut it off here. And then I'm going to make multiple of these. And I'm going to join them next to each other and on top. So it looks like a pronounced uh, X shape that is going to kind of diagonal zigzag across. And then I'm going to make this a poncho. So it's going to be large enough where it's going to kind of drape. It's going to be a large rectangle on both sides, front and back. It's going to drape over. And it's going to be really flowy. I'm really excited. I'm really, really excited. So that is my vision. It's still in development stages. So I'm still in design, design development on it, playing with it. But, um, but yeah, I'm really excited. I'm hoping to have that ready somewhere in the summertime. So it'll, that tutorial will be ready for you, but I'm, yeah, that one I'm excited about. Okay. Thanks for asking. So let's go back to questions. Christine. Christine. Ever made a beanie with it? Okay. Have you ever made a beanie with a ponytail hole? Yes, I have. In fact, I made the page beanie with a ponytail hole. Um, what I do is I take... A, a black elastic rubber band. You can buy a whole pack of them from the Dollar Tree. And that's where I would get mine is the Dollar Tree. You get a whole pack of them. And uh, you take this rubber band. And uh, when I get, if I'm working from the bottom of the beanie up to the top where it closes up at the top, I believe I stop at like the third round before I close. And then I will add the rubber band there where it, the, the hole is still bigger than the rubber band. So I have to work into the rubber band. Um, and that the hole has to be, the hole of the, the beanie has to be larger than the rubber band. That way the rubber band has room to expand and contract. And then I will just take and stitch 
one round joining the rubber band to the beanie and then stop and that leaves the hole. Now, if you begin the beanie with the rubber band, then I would also start on like round three. So depending on how many stitches are in round three, I would slip stitch to join around the rubber band, chain one, and then I would single crochet the same number of stitches around the rubber, rubber band that you would have in round three. And then I would start working uh, round four next, next round on top of the rubber band. So hopefully that helps. I hope that was helpful. <laughs> That's what I would do. Um, it can be really cool working the ponytail out the top. I, Sorry, off top topic, a little tangent here. Uh, so have you run into the issue with the ponytail beanies where the top of it, when you put the top over your head and you're trying to get your ponytail through the hole, that all of a sudden a bunch of your little hairs shift forward. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you're taking like three minutes, like tucking your hair back into the beanie. Been there. So I actually had this design idea in my head of um, making an, a flap opening on the bottom part of the beanie. So the top was closed, but then you would open it up, secure the ponytail, secure it around your ears, and then flap it over and button it to close it. That way you didn't have to deal with all of that hair fuzz. I've only worked on that design like once. So if you want, if you want to play with my design, my idea... Here you go. <laughs> Have fun. But that was something that I uh, I always had an issue with that. I never really liked ponytail beanies because of that. Whenever I put it on, all of a sudden my hair was just like, and I'd be like, oh. so tried to find a solution, but I never gave it enough time to come to life. So if you want to give it a try, have fun. Um, candy. Have you ever crocheted earmuffs? So uh, don't mess up hair. I have not crocheted ear muffs, the little, the little balls that go around your ear. Um, gosh, now I like my brain just exploded with ideas on how you would do that. I'd be like, yeah, you just go to the Dollar Tree and you get a headband and you just crochet around the headband. And then at the ends, make little, basically like stuffed animal <laughs> <laughs> like uh, uh, round things to cover your ears to keep them warm. And then if you want to make it for kids, you put little faces on them. <laughs> Sorry, my brain just exploded with ideas. I oh, That's all I heard was earmuffs. And I'm like, hmm. No, I haven't. I haven't made earmuffs. I did make a really, really cute beanie for my nephew when he was born. His dad is super into music. So I made him the beanie that looks like it had headphones attached to it. And uh, on the ear flaps, I attached what looked like the bottom of the headphones, you know, like those big bulky headphones. And that was, that was really adorable, but that's as far as I've gotten when it comes to earmuffs. All right. Stephanie's question. Could you show us Tunisian stitches? Stephanie, I could. I haven't played with it yet, honestly. Um, I have, here, let me show you. So, So I have the hooks. I have all the hooks. Look at these things here. Tunisian crochet hooks. Super, super long. This is what I got. Uh, I want to try playing with Tunisian crochet because I like how the stitches look like knit. I think it's a different vibe, different feel. Um, and it just looks fun. It's just taking something you do all the time and 
changing it up a, just even a little bit to intrigue your brain and uh, do something exciting. And so I have the interest. The interest is there. I have not played with Tunisian crochet stitches yet. Um, I do know that the person, the go-to person for Tunisian stitches on YouTube is TL Yarncrafts. She's all about Tunisian crochet hooks. And in fact, she even wrote a book, uh, a crochet pattern book on Tunisian crochet stitches. So check her out if you're really dying to know. It might take me a second to get comfortable enough with uh, with the hooks and with the, the style before I actually do a video on how to do it. But the, the interest is there. Thank, thank you for asking. The interest is definitely there. Um, okay. It's like you guys are asking me so many amazing questions that now I'm even getting lost in my text messages. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. Where, where was the last one? Um, your muffs. Oh, there we go. Tanishan. Okay. Virginia's question. I really like when you ask a question and you put the question marks, the really big red question marks in there. It makes it so easy to identify the question. So thank you so much for doing that. Again, all of my members out there, use your emojis. Now is the time to do it. Go crazy with your emojis. Have fun. Love, love, love having an opportunity to use those things. Okay, so Virginia, you said, I've asked before, but I'm still wondering how many more skeins of Red Heart Super Saver Jumbo Yarn I'll need to complete a blanket for a full-size bed. I have two, but I'm thinking I'm going to need more. Yeah, yeah, you will. Okay, so uh, Virginia, my suggestion for you, I don't know if you saw this yet. I made a video on how many skeins will I need to make this blanket. and. The thing is, is it's so hard to answer that question. It, it's almost impossible for me to just blankly say, all right, you want to make this size blanket? You're going to use this size yarn. You need, you need this many skeins to accomplish it. And the reason I say that is because, one, I don't know what pattern you're using. You could be using a yarn eater pattern that you get two inches in and one skein down. And I'm, and I'm like, I way underestimated how many skeins you need to buy or your tension is really tight or your tension is really loose. Um, the crochet hook that you are using with the yarn, what size is it? Is it going to, again, produce really tight stitches or really loose stitches? And then the super saver yarn, I, I don't know uh, which, are you using the smaller one or are you using the great big one. Um, there's, there's just so many variables. It's, it's pretty impossible for me to answer that question for you, but I did make a video on how many skeins will I need to complete this blanket. What I do, and I can, I can show you, I can tell you real quick. So, um, take your, if, if you know the dimensions of the blanket you want to make, okay, you know that the blanket needs to be this many inches wide from side to side. Okay, uh, chain, make your foundation row chain until you've met blanket width dimension. And then make row after row after row, working your pattern with whatever stitch you are making, just use one skein, only one skein, okay? That, that's super important, especially if the rest of your blanket is going to be using the exact same skein. That's also extremely important. <laughs> using the exact same yarn will help in this regard. Okay, so now you know you've met blanket width dimension of the blanket size that you want to make. You've already hit it. Go to measure how long that one skein was able to make progress in your blanket. Okay, do uh, measure the side of that row that is not complete. So let's say your blanket's this long and you're about to start new row, new row goes this far and then stops, okay? Measure over here. Do not measure including the unfinished row. Measure over here, okay? 
So you measure from the very bottom foundation row of your blanket all the way up to as far as you were able to get with one skein of yarn. Okay. Let's say it was eight inches. You got eight inches out of one skein of yarn. Perfect. Okay. The blanket that you want to make, let's say it's 72 inches long. You need your blanket to meet blanket length dimension to be 72 inches. Take 72 inches, divide it by eight that you were able to get with one skein. And now you will know how many skeins you're going to need to complete that blanket. Staying consistent with the same yarn. Okay. The, I, I, that's the best, the best help that I can offer you. Unfortunately, um, I made a video kind of explaining all that anyway. If you want to go back and watch that video, hopefully it helps you, but um, good luck. <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I'm so, if you're still here, you guys are awesome. <laughs> okay. Thank you for hanging out with me with all these questions. Uh, Rachel's question. Hey, hey. I don't know if this is the place to request it, but my teen has asked for a dream catcher pillow. Uh, there are several patterns, but I need a tutorial. Thank, thank you for, uh, thank you for you. Oh, all right. So the hard thing is, is I'm not taking pattern requests or tutorial requests at the moment, uh, just because this year I've already locked in every pattern for the entire year. Literally, I have everything locked in. I had to be very focused this year just to make sure I could get everything uh, accomplished, especially with my, my kits that I have out now. I have to be extremely dialed in with everything that I'm doing. And uh, so unfortunately, I'm not taking any tutorial requests at the moment, though I will write down your tutorial request and have it on my list of things that I would love to get to. And then when I revisit any tutorials that I want to make, yours will be on that list for me to pick from. So I apologize for not being able to get you something sooner. I, I hate when people are like, I want to make this for this person. I want to be there for you so bad. I want to help that. I want to make all these tutorials, but I just, I, unfortunately I can't. Um, but good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Um, crochet laboratory. Crochet. Where are you? Any tips for first time market? Yes, I actually do. Um, I have a whole lot of tips, actually. Whole lot. Where do I even start? First time market. Farmer's market or event? Um, okay, going with either. We're going to say, we're, we're going to say either one. Cover the gambit. Okay, one, bring a friend. Bring a friend. Because if you have to go to the bathroom, you want to make sure that somebody's watching your booth. <laughs> Huge. Or if you want to get something to eat, also bring food. Uh, make sure you have a cooler or something because it's a real bummer. You're there for uh, around, uh, depends on the event, but you're there for around four hours. So bring food, something to drink. Um, also uh, bring a notepad. Bring a notepad because you're going to be taking a lot of notes or requests or if somebody wants uh, a special order and um, they want a certain color of something, you know, you'll have something to write on. Uh, bags are helpful. Sometimes uh, those little paper bags with the, the twine handle make them feel special. Make people feel special for buying something from you. Um, Uh, also eye level, eye level is huge. So you got your table, use a tablecloth. I don't know if that's just a given or not, but use a tablecloth, make it look professional and pretty. Um, eye level, anything that you really want to sell or get, catch people's attention, have it be right there. Use the space. Don't just use table room, use height too. I have, I would use those wood crates that I would stack on my table to give myself even more room. Um, and so that is going to be a big deal also is uh, not just use the table space, but go taller. Also, that, that'll also help with the eye level. And uh, I could, I could keep going, have, uh, 
Make sure you have a credit card, some way of taking credit cards because nobody carries cash anymore. Um, so try to make sure you have some way of taking a credit card, um, but also have change if somebody does for some reason carry cash. So I mean, like I said, I have so many tips. I can't wait to get that out to you guys, but um, in due time, in due time. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. Uh, Christine, how do you determine what style of border to pick for a blanket pattern? That's really personal preference, what you're feeling and who you're making it for. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's really up to the, the creator, what border. If you're making a baby blanket, a lot of people get worried about fingers and toes getting caught in stitches. So having a salt, more solid border for a baby blanket is more ideal, not not the only thing you can do. So if you really wanted to make one more detailed with more holes, you technically could, but I know a lot of people, um, they get worried with babies and their fingers and toes getting caught in stitches. So solid border for baby blanket, um, for, a, a, a male, uh, for a man, a guy, any male, they generally don't like details at all. They, they, like more um, straightforward stitches, just play with the color. So you would be doing kind of like a, a seed stitch or a regular single crochet, double crochet, half double crochet, just regular plain stitch border. But maybe you uh, have like uh, an alteration of colors, like color A, color B, color C, color A, color B, color C. So play with colors. That's also really, really fun to do. If you wanna keep a simple border, but make it different, just do a color variation. Um, or if you want to do something more show, showing off, maybe you're making it for a loved one um, and you really kind of want to make it extra special and you, uh, you know that this person would appreciate detail, then I would go for the show. <laughs> you know, just be like super detail, the extra loops, the fans, the curls, the... Uh, the baubles, the just the post stitches just go crazy, you know, so it, it really depends on who you're making it for. Okay, this is fun. I'm having fun. Are you having fun? Are you enjoying this? I hope you are. Okay, perfect. Okay, Virginia. I was curious about borders myself, Christina. I want to do a single crochet, half double crochet, and pico edge. Look at you. That's awesome. On the border or on the blanket. I'm working on now, but I'm not sure how it will look. Is that the border? Do a single half. Oh, no. Virginia, go for it. That'll be beautiful. That'll be really, really pretty. Yeah, so starting with the single crochet border, kind of like the foundation row border for the blanket to just establish, then however many rounds that you want to make of the half double crochet stitch that you have here, and then end your last your last round of the border with a pico stitch. Oh, oh, that would be beautiful. Do it. Please do it. Please. Yes. Yes. And it would be solid and it would be flattering. Yes, do it. How many projects would you recommend working on at one time? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't mean to laugh, but I recommend, I recommend like three, three at one time. A long one, one that takes you a little more time. Maybe it's a blanket that's really big and it's kind of your relaxation, doesn't take much thought. It's just your sit down and go. It's it's not so much about the project, it's more about the process. That's one project. Second project is your quick win, your easy little project, quick win. Gotta have those in there from time to time because You've got to be able to feel that feeling of I've I've, I've done I've, I've accomplished it it it's done oh it feels so good okay on to the next because <laughs> we're all gluttons for punishment but uh, no yeah quick win 
feels so good. It feels so good. Um, and then the third project would be um, just really whatever you want it to be, just something something to balance you from the really big project. Because if you're working on just one project and it's a really big project, it's very common to get bored with that project or just be over that project. You just don't want to work on it anymore. And it it's no longer fun. It's no longer enjoyable. So having another project to work on to give yourself a break from this one and then kind of balance back and forth with them really helps keep the engagement, keeps the interest there with that third project being just the quick wins, quick in and out. Yay, I finished it. Now I laugh so profusely about my recommended crochet projects because I think I probably have 15 working on right now, which is ridiculous. I have 15 whips I'm working on. Now there are projects that I've and that's, I don't know if that's a fact. I know it's probably right around that, but that is because there are projects that I began a long time ago and I probably just abandoned them, stepped away because something else took precedence and I needed to work on that. Or I got really inspired and excited about a yarn that just made me super happy. And so I wanted to dive into a project right away and it's still in progress. Um, and then also working on YouTube with the tutorials, I can't just have this upcoming video project on my hook. I need to have this week's, next week's, and the week after that, while also thinking about what I'm doing next month. So it's a constant thing in my brain. I have to have, especially if it's a project that is a big project that takes a long time, like the campfire cardigan that I did. That one took me so long because I had to work a little bit, then record another tutorial, then work a little bit more on it, record another tutorial, work a little bit more on it, record another tutorial. So in that regard, I had this one floating whip going for a long time. Um, so it's, I'm, I wouldn't recommend doing, doing what I'm doing just because it can be, it can result in a lot of chaos. It can result in a lot of stressful environment because when I walk into the room, I just see all of these unfinished projects and it does bring stress, uh, which is why I end up moving all of my mess out into the hall, <laughs> out into the hallway. <laughs> and then my husband gets mad because he's like, you're moving your mess out into the hallway. And I'm like, I'm sorry. I just can't work with all that stuff around me. But, um, so I, I would recommend three. There's, there's my answer. Um, okay. Perfect. Okay. Hope. Hope. Is the Red Heart Super Saver yarn good for a baby blanket or do I need another brand? <sighs> do I want to touch that one? Um, okay. I'll touch that one. So that one is hugely debatable. There are some people that love Red Heart Super Saver. There is a way after you make the blanket to wash the blanket and then the, the yarn softens up and becomes more comfortable. And then there's other people that will not touch Red Heart Super Saver um, because it it is more coarse. It There is softer yarn to work with. I'll, I'll be I'll just say that there is softer yarn to work with. Now it, it can be hard because Red Heart Super Saver is also affordable. Um, and so it makes it, and there's so many colors. There's so many beautiful colors. They really just kind of exploded with options and variations. Personally, personally, I would save Red Heart for a different project, not a wearable. Um, so then what would you use it for, Tiffany? I would use, I would personally use Red Heart for more uh, around the house projects or an adult blanket. I know some people really like a more wool-like feel, that texture. They like that texture. 
if you're making it for a baby, personally, I would probably choose a yarn that was softer. But you can do it. You, you absolutely can use it. So I'm going to let that, I'm going to give that one back to you and say, I'm going to let you choose what you would like to do. Man, that, that, that question right there, Red Heart, Super Saver Yarn. That one gets people in trouble. <laughs> there are some people that are strong one way or strong the other. Uh, Trudy, how did the Warm Up America Drive go or how did it go? I don't know yet. Great question, Trudy. So I find out this month. I, I will let you know. I will post in the community tab of my YouTube channel. I will post in there um, when I am having my... Um, my meeting with Warm Up America. So they have a Facebook live that they do once a month where they reveal everything about the campaign they just finished. So this month I'm going to be live on their Facebook live and they're going to reveal to me what number count they came up with for our Warm Up America campaign. And I'm so excited. I cannot wait to hear what we did. I, I mean, I've heard so many people just tell me how much that they made and donated and got into them. And I'm, I'm like, wow, this is going to be awesome. This is gonna be so cool. We, even if we didn't like hit certain numbers, just the fact that we participated makes me so proud of you, makes me so proud of us and so proud of what we are capable of. Like this, this was huge. We, we helped so many people and it's so beautiful. It encourages me so much to just do another one and another one and another one just to continue to help all these people. Okay. And Christine, where are you? Oh, just a question. Okay. Can you do a video on how to do the board? Are you talking about blocking? I, I do have a video on blocking. It's, um, it's called blocking for beginners and it's the three different methods on blocking. So, uh, check that out. There's a couple different boards. I used, so this is what I use. I use the back so you could see the pattern, but this, this is what it would normally look like on the other side. So that way you could keep everything straight and in line with each other. I got my blocking kit on Amazon. So um, if, if you're interested at all. Great question, though. Thank you for asking. Uh, Crochet Laboratory asks if you have any ideas for hot spring summer market. When it comes to hot spring summer market, I recommend toys. Toys are going to be a lot of fun. Stuffed animals are a lot of fun. Kids, you know, the families. Parents will bring their young children. Children flock to crocheted stuffed animals. They just are like magnets. Uh, also, if, have you seen those spiral wind chimes? I think those are going to do extremely well this year because they're creative. They're beautiful. They're fun. Um, I would give those a try. Uh, if you have never, if you've never heard of this, just uh, type in crochet pinwheels, I think is what they're called. Wind or windmills. Um, and when it comes to markets, keep, keep, uh, keep it small, like maybe keychains. Um, check out, check out my smalls playlist on YouTube, or if you want some more ideas, uh, I have a Pinterest, a Pinterest account. I think I have links in um, the description section here with all my contact information. I think there's a link to my Pinterest boards. I made a Pinterest board for smalls and check those out for just quick. You want quick makes and you want things that are smaller so you can sell them for less and things that are attractive to just grab people. People like that kind of stuff or even games like have you thought about making uh, a chess board? Have you seen those where it's like a, a black and white checkered spots with the round pucks that are both red and black games? Get Just have fun. Just have a lot of fun. Hopefully that helps you. Um, 
Kat wants to know if you'll make any more amigurumi stuff stuffies. So yes, my goal is to make a lot this year. Um, because of the projects that I have in store for March, I had to bump the stuffy because the projects that I have are just too, too large. Um, they, they're going to take too much time, but my goal is to make six significant stuffies this year. I am, I'm like looking at my list right now. <laughs> I'm going to make my, or my goal. If, if something happens and I have to bump one, it, it's just life. It just happens. But my goal is to make a monkey, a lion, a giraffe, a zebra, and an elephant. I want to do all the African animals. So, and I'm going to make them like um, the floppy long, long arms, long legs, super cuddly stuffed animals. That, that's my goal. I want to do that really, really bad because one, I love stuffed animals. It's one of my favorite things to crochet. I just absolutely love and adore stuffed animals. Two, I want to make sure that this Christmas you guys have some toys available for you to pick through so you can make something. Three, crocheted stuffed animals. I, I'm not joking, guys. They are so loved and so cherished by kids that it might be one of the most beautiful things I've ever, I've ever made. And it's just, it's really, really cool. Especially if you can get the color right and, um, and personal to that individual. Oh yeah. It, it's, it's super, super special. Um, okay. Sarah. How do you pick your color combination for projects? It's hard. That is one area that I struggle with is color combinations. So what I have done is I, I go on Pinterest and I look up color combinations. <laughs> I know it's, it's kind of cheating. I, I mean, it's not, it's, it is, it's not because I let somebody else do the work for me, but I'll, I'll go to Pinterest and I'll look up color combinations um, or color palettes. It's called color palettes. And I'll look at these images and I'll find ones that speak to me. Or I get a lot of inspiration when I'm out and about. People that are with me, they, they can attest to the fact that I'm always having my camera out and I'll take pictures of the silliest things. But it's because it inspired me. The color combinations inspired me or the design or pattern inspired me. Uh, I literally have a project that I created based on what the sky looked like out my outside my window. And it was like, oh my gosh, the sunset, it was like pink and then yellow and then gray and then blue. And I was like, this is stunning. And it was beautiful. So I like wrote that down really quick. Now, when I came to the project that I wanted to make, the colors weren't represented the same way it looked on in the beautiful sky. So I'm like, okay, that doesn't, that's not going to make it out to the public. But, <laughs> but honestly, I get inspiration everywhere. I, I'm always trying to pay attention to what looks really good together, what catches my eye, what I think is beautiful. And sometimes I get that inspiration from Pinterest palettes, color palettes. Hopefully that helps you. Um, hope, hope you are very engaged in this conversation. I can't tell you how happy I am with how engaged you've been, how many questions you've asked. That's really cool. What brand of yarn do you recommend for a baby blanket? I've only worked with Red Heart Super Saver yarn. You poor thing. Oh, my heart goes out to you. Um, go to the yarn. Uh, do you have the ability to go to the yarn store? Um, some people don't. So that's a legit question. Some people do not have one close by. They do not have the ability. They need to buy online. Because what I would say is go to the yarn store, walk down the aisle and do the yarn scrunch test, you know, where you take a skein and you're just like squishy. How does this feel? You know, you rub it all over your face. You rub it on your neck and you're like, how does this feel? You know, is it soft? So that's my favorite way to go buy yarn is to go down the aisle and do the yarn scrunch test. Um, but if you don't have the ability to do that and you want to play it safe, if you love Red Heart Super Saver, stick in the same brand, Red Heart with love. Love working with that. 
Red Heart Soft. I think that's what it's called. Love working with that. Um, there's a lot, there's a lot of Red Heart brand yarn that is beautiful and it's work, it's super soft. So you can feel free to work in that same category. Uh, and then honestly, there's just so, so much yarn. There's so many different types of yarn that um it really comes down to feeling it, knowing that a baby in particular is going to have very sensitive skin. So uh, I think the most sensitive part of your body, they say, is on your inner wrist. So you can rub it there and see if that's comfortable or not. And that, that would be my best recommendation. I like when I make blankets. I use a large variation. It really depends on the blanket. Um, try bulky yarn. If that would be interesting to you, uh, I, when it comes to baby blankets, I use, like using a bulkier yarn because they work up that the blanket works up faster and it's plushy and soft. Um, Yeah, I can't really think of anything off the top of my head right now that I have quick access to. But, um, but yeah, I would I would just try to do that. Hopefully that helps. Um, is there a way to fix a project if you realize you missed counted a couple of end stitches without pulling it apart? Great question, Christine. Okay, so... What I would do is see how messed up it is. Like, is it significantly out or in um, to see if you can save it? If you can, the best thing I could say is from the point that you're at right now, try to keep it straight. And then um, what I would recommend is stitch counting your first four or the next four rows of the blanket. That way you can, one, make sure that you're staying on count, you're staying consistent. Two, by working four rows consistently, you will definitely see a pattern on where the row should end and where the row should begin. Um, and it'll just start to become very clear to you. And hopefully you can keep working that blanket straight here on out. And then potentially, depending on how how significant the gap is in or out, uh, you can fix the ends with a border to make it look more cohesive. Um, there, I've always played around with the idea of making a cover-up border where you have an external something that kind of just wraps around your blanket, <laughs> and then you you sew you sew the border to the actual blanket itself, and it covers up the misshapen sides. I just haven't gotten around to it yet, but you could do that too, where you just create a, a rectangle shape that is narrow, however much you want it to be into the blanket on both sides. And then just the length of your blanket and then wrap it around the edges of your board, your blanket to make the cover up border. <laughs> I always thought that would be a lot of fun. Oh my gosh. Okay. And would you recommend bulky or regular size yarn for a baby blanket? Depends on the pattern you're working. Regular size yarn helps uh, with more detailed stitches if you wanted to go super detailed, super pretty, and have like delicate stitches in there, I'd go regular. If you're just making a, a flat one stitch, maybe it's a, a fan stitch or maybe a shell stitch or um, it's just something, maybe it's just a regular half double crochet or regular double crochet stitch. Bulky is still beautiful and it, it's just solid blanket, gets it done fast and it looks beautiful. But um, if you wanted to do some fancy stitch that needed uh, that you need it thinner to be more detailed so you can see what the stitch looks like or the detail, then I would go thinner yarn. 
Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this off for tonight. We could, we could literally keep going for another hour. It's we're already an hour and 20 minutes into this. Love all the questions, love all the engagement. Again, I'm not going to be here next Tuesday because of parent night at my kid's school it happens to be at the same time, same day as these Tuesday live Q and A's. So I'm going to miss you next week. If you really want more information, if you really have a question, I definitely encourage you to join the crafters gathering because we're basically, we basically do this every Wednesday and every Saturday also. So except for I can see you, I can hear you. So I encourage you to check out the membership program. I think it would be awesome. They're a lot of fun. They're they're really great. Um, also, again, check out my Instagram for more behind the scenes of what I'm working on in the process and just more what life is like for me behind the camera. Um, subscribe to my channel. That way you don't miss the upcoming videos that I have coming. If you haven't subscribed yet, you don't want to miss this out. Okay. And like this video if you, if you thought it was fun, if you enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed spending all this time with you guys. It's been awesome. All right. I will see you guys in two weeks with another one of these. Okay. So I look forward to seeing you. I miss you already. Thank you so much for joining me. Love you guys. Have a beautiful evening. I'll see you soon. Keep crocheting.